My fellow prophecy student, greetings. In the biblical forecast of events leading up to the end of the world, God is often represented as exercising his power to inflict punishment and sufferings upon the wicked. But is this the kind of God we read about in the scriptures? Are we to believe that the divine power that was once used for our protection is now to be exercised in the destruction of those who are not in agreement with his maker? If we are to hold this view of God, then we have to admit that he is not the merciful, compassionate, and long-suffering God he claims to be. But is there a vengeful side to his character that is on display in the biblical representation of him bringing natural disasters upon the earth? In his second epistle, the Apostle Peter thus describes the character of God towards the wicked. He says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter three and verse nine. Accordingly, the prophet Ezekiel declared, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Ezekiel eighteen and verse thirty two. It has never been God's intention to hurt any of us. He has no delight in our sufferings. According to the scriptures, hellfire was never intended for us, but was prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25 verse 41 Whatever happens to the wicked will come as a result of their solidarity with Satan in their sinful indulgences. There are so many things that God can do to bring an end to this world's ills, and the destruction of the wicked is just one method. In his infinite wisdom, God must have considered this to be the most appropriate means of punishment. It is quite common for many observers in their contemplation of end-of-the-world events to suggest that God will use his miraculous power to send fire upon the earth and destroy the wicked. In other words, he will actively retaliate against everyone who is not on his side. This view does not only contradict the general Bible teaching about the kind of person God is, but it also ignores the fact that there are many texts that attribute to God disastrous events that he does not interpose to prevent. Here are some examples. 1. God is represented as the one who killed King Saul. 1 Chronicles 10 13 and 14. But the fact of the story is that Saul was the one who fell on his own sword. 1 Samuel 31 and verse 4. 2. God is represented as sending strong delusions in the last days to deceive the wicked. But it will really be the work of Satan who, under divine permission, will work with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 8 and 9. 3. God is said to be the one who attempted to destroy Job, Job 2 and verse 3, but it was in fact Satan who tried to kill him, Job 1, 9 to 12. 4. It is said that God is the one who sent the fire that destroyed Job's sheep, Job 1 and verse 16, but from the story it was the work of Satan, Job 1 verse 9 to 12. And 5. The Bible said that God moved David to number the people in Israel. 1 Samuel 24 and verse 1. But it was in fact Satan who caused him to do it. 2 Chronicles 21 and verse 1. Attributing the work of Satan to God is clearly a manner of speaking governed by the notion that because God is sovereign, he has total control over what he prevents and what he permits. But in some of these cases in the scriptures, there is also the evidence that it was commonly believed that natural disasters come from God. As you examine God's role in end time events, you should allow your study to be guided by these different situations. In light of this observation, the obvious question is, what will then happen at the second coming? In my contemplation of God's role in the fulfillment of prophetic events relating to the end of the world, I find the story of Gideon in the book of Judges very instructive. 
It was about how God uses the 300 men to defeat hundreds and thousands of Midianite warriors. In this so-called war, all that Gideon army did was to blow a trumpet, break a pitcher, and shout, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! and caused the vast army of Midian to kill one another. You can read this story in Judges 7. Interestingly, that seemed to be a similar scenario to what is chronicled in the book of Zechariah. In his end of the world forecast, the prophet Zechariah declares, And it shall come to pass in that day, that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Zechariah 14 and verse 13 With the present amassing of nuclear weaponry as a major part of preparation for war, it is not difficult to believe that man will one day destroy themselves. Considering the fact that nuclear energy, in the quantity in which it is now available, is capable of destroying this world 30 times over, could it be that the world will end in a conflagration on account of the wicked turning against each other? As we follow the end time prophecies and the many warnings about how the Lord will destroy the wicked, you need to consider the curses that sin has brought upon the world. The entrance of sin is weighed with eternal consequences which our merciful God has been restraining for thousands of years mainly because his dear son from the beginning has pledged to take our place. Revelation 13 and verse 8, St. John 1 and verse 29. Those who refuse this provision will eventually suffer the natural consequences and perish, while those who accept the Lamb of God as their substitute will have everlasting life. St. John 3 and verse 16. God does not warn us about a judgment because he is planning to kill those who are not with him. Every word of exhortation to turn from our sins is an attempt to shield us from the natural results of pursuing a life of transgression. The final consequences of sin will be seen in the ultimate wickedness of men towards his fellow men at Christ's return and at the end of the thousand years thereafter. For further end time studies of the Daniel Revelation prophecies covering this and other end time subjects, download my end time prophecy free book at www.prophecyecourse.com In the meantime, study to show yourself approved unto God and be the best prophecy student you can be. Thanks for watching.